You never know which time will be the last time you pick up your daughter. This is Retrace segment number 21. It's Sunday, October 16th, 2022, just barely, 11.54 p.m. Retrace is about what's going on out there. That, um, that opening line, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. It's from Sam Harris. He said it a couple of times over the, over the years, making the point, well, he's making his own point when he says it, but we're talking about the deadline problem right now. And, you know, it's, it's, it's academic when we think about global catastrophic risks when we think about what's going on out there, when we think about, you know, the epistemology, that's a fancy word for what is knowable in philosophy or like what your theory of knowledge is. When we think about those, when we think about the deadline problem from those angles, it's academic, but it's not academic. I mean, first of all, you know, there are only about 8 billion humans who haven't died in all of history, and all of them are on track to switch categories. You know, it makes me think, oh, there was a movie. Wasn't there a movie where there's infertility? And then the, and there's probably multiple movies like that, but I, don't, I haven't seen one, but I think I heard about one. You know, if we suddenly couldn't, we, you know, suddenly we couldn't have babies, Clock's ticking for us as a species. Not that that's a really good way of thinking about us and we as a species. That's hard. It's very hard to put every human being. I mean, people can't do human beings, let alone animals. It's just too hard. You don't have that much capacity. You can do it on principle. But it's harder to do it in practice. Clock is ticking. You never know which time will be the last time you pick up your daughter or your guitar. A far less important object, by the way. I'm just, I'm trying to make the point. You, you don't know. You don't know when the last time of things is going to be. Obviously, you know, all of our, we all have the same nightmare that we're almost done. What's the, Time, uh, in Time with Justin Timberlake that was a great movie I don't know why people don't love that movie that was a great movie but they could see how much time they had left they, you know, they basically had to budget it and, and more importantly hustle it up every day if you were low income or low, low savings low on savings and then the rich people you know, they never had to think about it but you, you know, they could see it on their arms like there's a little clock ticking and all of our nightmares, I mean, there are people who, you know, they're done with life for periods of their, their a lifetime. They're depressed or something terrible has happened and they just don't want to be alive anymore. Or they, they've, you know, they feel like they're done with life. Yeah, but most of the time, most of us, it's a nightmare to think about our time running out way sooner than we thought. Time's up. Let's let's play with this a little bit. It's a it's a dark subject. I know it's, it's I, but let's just let's just think about it for a second. I mean, how do you? Well, what's what's the, what's the, what are you going through right now? Having a good time? Time's up. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about where are you at in your life? I don't know. I know where I'm at in my life. Right smack dab in the middle. Hopefully, hopefully. But we're all at different places. If you're young, you probably. I'm not even thinking about this it's depressing swipe or whatever you do to <laughs> shut down what, my voice. If you're older, you're, you you know, I I don't I haven't gotten any closer to the end of a typical lifespan than I am at this very second, but I think I can imagine the closer you get, the scarier it gets. Not for some people. Some people seem so well adjusted to the 
the shortness of life, the Seneca. I knew Seneca was going to, the, sh uh, the shortness of life. Not me. Probably not you. I don't think that's normal. But, you know, we have to think about it. We don't have to. No, we don't. Lots of people do it, never do it, never think about it. But let's, let's. And I don't want it to be the dark version. I just want to play with the logic of this a little bit. Okay? This is hard to think about. But I'm not going to talk about... I don't think I'm going to talk about anything harder than I've already talked about. Eh, maybe a little. Listen, if you, if you can't handle the darkness, stay out of the kitchen. All right. Um, basically... I want to look at this from, from the angle of two different thoughts. One, I had them both. Man, something was going on with me in April of 2020. <laughs> that's when both of these, that's the timestamp on both of these things. Okay. Oh, it was like one weekend, Saturday and Sunday. All right, here we go. The first one, let's say, let's call these last time thought experiments. Last time thought experiments. Uh, so we just, we read the, or I did, I'm not quoting Sam Harris. I don't know. I'm not going to dig through his podcasts to find exactly when, for, uh, for example, when he said that phrase, you never know which time will be the last time you pick up your daughter. But, oh, and the other thing about that is that it's not, it's not, it's mostly like the, the connotation of it is not, I'm going to be dead or I can't even say it out loud. Someone, you know, the other thing, the other death that could, but, um, it's, it's like that she's growing up. You never know, you know, she's growing up. You never know when the last time I and and I'm so glad he had that thought and shared it because I I do not take that for granted. Anyway, it's not about me. Uh that's not a his 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 thought is not about death. But it's very related in a sense because it deals with the deadline problem. You have a deadline. You want to pick up your daughter, enjoy that experience as as many times as you both feel comfortable without just carrying her around all your life until she's like, put me down at age. I, well, I can confirm that they still want to be picked up at nine, but it's diminishing. So I don't know. Um, you, you know, it's, it, it's, you know, there's a deadline coming. Okay. That's not a death deadline. That's just a, that's just a life deadline. There's lots of life is, life is finite. Life is short and things change and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Enough. The last time thought experiments. Let's do this. What about the last time you play guitar? Raise my hand. I play guitar. What, what's going to be the last time I play, play guitar? What about watch TV? What about drive a car? What about the last time you go to the grocery store? What about the last time you wake up and read the news? And I've got Hitchens, an interview with Christopher Hitchens, a Paxman interview. I've got the YouTube link. I'll put that in the notes. He must have talked about that, but I don't know. It was like more than two years ago. Um, now what about the last two times not the last time the penultimate time what about that one the penultimate time you go to the grocery store um what about the last five times the pentaultimate time what about the fifth to last time what about the fiftieth to last time at some point if you keep inspecting these last time minus ends uh, you're going to arrive at the present now. So, for example, this is the nth ultimate last time I'm picking up this coffee mug. Which, by the way, says, coffee is for closers, not what it looks like when I hold it most of the time. When the sea is covered, coffee is for losers. See that? It's not what it says, but it often says that. I'm not going to do that an infinite number of times. Pick up that coffee is for losers mug. <laughs> coffee is for closers. Which is why my cup is filled with water. Because I'm not a closer yet. <laughs> um, you do that counting backward from the last moment. You arrive at the present. Everything you're doing today is the nth ultimate time you're going to do it. Now consider the difference between knowing it was the last time and not knowing. Knowing as you're suddenly faced with, it's not even death. Like what if I just stop drinking out of coffee cups? I'm not faced with death, 
but I might have just picked up a coffee mug for the last time. And do I know it? Or if I resolve to stop, I'm not pick, I'm not drinking out of coffee mugs anymore. It's for losers. I'm not doing that. That's I'm going to be cool. I'm going to drink out of something way more, way more something else. All right. So what? It, this is the early days of COVID when I made this note. So I said, you know, what about knowing that something you're, you're doing something for the last time? Shoot, I'm going to get dark here. Sorry, but just just bear with me. For example, being diagnosed with COVID-19 and thus knowing that you'll be quarantined from your loved ones, even if you're breathing your last breaths, that happened. I don't need to tell you if you lived through it. What hell on earth? I mean, there are lots of hells on earth, and that's one of them. You're diagnosed with COVID. You know darn well that at, in April of 2020, at least, you're not going to be because of the fear of contagion, you're not going to be allowed near your loved ones and vice versa. And let's say you already have a pre-existing condition of some sort that predisposes you to a bad case, a bad... I mean, that's knowing it prospectively. That's knowing it in advance. Compare that to knowing it retrospectively. There's a lot... I mean, so that's knowing... Wait, wait, wait. I wrote this note in a confusing way. Uh, quarantine from your loved ones, i.e. knowing in retrospect. That's not knowing in retrospect. And knowing it is the last time in prospect or presently, e.g. when you're on death row, your last meal. Oh, yeah, yeah if you... If it's not knowing in retrospect, someone else might know it in retrospect, but if you're gone, you're not going to know it. Anyway, okay. You take my point, do you? My point is um, knowing and not knowing about a deadline changes the way the world seems. Knowing about being, you know, quarantined for COVID or being, you know, that, you're, that, that that's imminent changes how the world seems. And it's not, I mean, there are lots of things in life. These People go through, you can be on the other side of stuff like this. It happens every day. And maybe by some definition, it happens to every one of us eventually. Not, no, no, it can't be because lots of people die and they never even knew that they were about to die. This is so dark. But the deadline problem is dark. Of course it's dark. But, man, I should have sprinkled some jokes in here or something. Ugh, okay, um... Let's talk more about that, how things seem. Well, this is a note, the phrase that I put on this is the inversion of interpretation from bad, from good to bad based on a deadline. This is something, you're, you know, whether something is good or bad can be inverted based on the deadline. Here's how. I just read it the way I wrote it. I'm looking out my office window. Trees newly green. Oh man, I'm such a poet. Trees newly green blowing in the breeze. If I have 10 to 40 years of life ahead of me, so this is two years ago, so you know, I'm basically the age I am now, more or less. If I have 10 to 40 years of life ahead of me, my vicious struggles with philosophy and income, see, now you know too much about me. My vicious struggles with philosophy and income seem to me to be the beginning of a profoundly important life's work. I know that sounds conceited, and it is, but you know, I think people trying to do something big are, they have to be that kind of conceited, but it's not, you know, I don't, I'll set that aside. Just bear with this guy and bear with me. Um, my, my, my vicious struggles seem to me to be the beginning of a profoundly important life's work. That's why I'm doing it. I think it's going to be profoundly impor important if I succeed at it. I'm sorry, but it's just, I do. If I have hours or days to live, on the other hand, not 10 to 40 years, but hours or days to live, the struggles, i.e. my vicious struggles with philosophy and income, <laughs> which seems so important to me by default. The struggles seem to me to be a manifest failure at life, at living a good life, a tragedy that will weigh most heavily on my kids and wife. See what I did there? You go from judging these struggles, my struggles, as being 
you know, the beginning of a profoundly important life's work. Man, I should have rephrased that before I read it out loud. But, you, you know, okay, that's honesty, right? I'm telling you that this is really what I was, this is really how I think. It goes from that, profoundly important, to, what did I say? A tragedy that will weigh most, you know, a failure, a manifest failure at life, at living a good life. And that will weigh most heavily on my kids and wife. Deadline flipped it. Good became bad. 100% good became 100% bad. How? Deadline. Real deadline. Not, I'm going to get this done by tomorrow. Real deadline. The one that's not, the, you're not in charge of the real ones. The deadline flipped my interpretation of my life or the, the centerpiece of my life's activities or, you know, uh, voluntary activities. Uh, whatever. You know, the, my struggles with philosophy and income. Man, I, I, not only did I <laughs> write that and read it here, I've done it like three times. Flipped that from being good to bad deadline real deadline this is a 180 degree turn of interpretation dependent on the deadline problem the unknown end of one's window of opportunity it doesn't have to be death the unknown end of one's window of opportunity there are so many windows opening and closing in a life if you're lucky enough to grow up, and nowadays most people are, wasn't always the case, infant mortality was. If you're lucky enough to grow up, if you're lucky enough to get to 15, windows are opening and closing, windows of opportunity. 20, even more. 25, even more. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Windows opening and closing. Windows of opportunity. But nothing is good or bad, though thinking makes it so. That's Shakespeare. I don't know if I, the phrase, I did it perfectly, but that's, nothing is good or bad, but thinking makes it so. And I think that's Hamlet, but I don't read Shakespeare. I don't, I just, that's a great quote that has reached me, if I'm paraphrasing. That's what's going on there. Not the first part, nothing is good or bad, but thinking makes it so. This, you know... The, de the deadline problem and, and these last time thought experiments and the, inver and, and the observation that you can invert something from good to bad or bad to good based on a deadline and not even like the deadline happening you can just thought experiment your way to it you know if I've got 10 minutes left of life crap I wasted it if I've got 10 years left no 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 this is on, I'm on schedule this is going to be great or not great but you know it's, got, it's not going to be great but it's got a good chance of it Maybe that stuff's good or bad inherently, but thinking can change it. Shakespeare says it's not, there's no inherent good. I'm not sure I agree with that. Actually, I know for sure that I don't, but I'm not going to bore you with my philosophy. But thinking definitely can change whether something is good or bad. These specific thought experiments about deadlines, real deadlines. Run your own. Run some thought experiments. What are you doing right now? How many times you got left? All right, enough. It's too intense. It's just a podcast. References from this segment will be in the show notes. Full PDF notes will be at retrace.com, R-E-T-R-A-I-C-E.com. This is Retrace segment number 21. Let's do it again tomorrow. <laughs>